Number 14, the formation of condensation on a glass of ice water causes the ice to melt faster than it would otherwise. If eight grams of condensation forms on a glass containing both water and 200 grams of ice, how many grams of the ice will melt as a result? All right, assume on no other heat transfers occur. So basically, in order to approach this problem, we just have to understand first the physics of it, because it kind of it might sound a little strange, all right? Um, so remember that you, here's our glass, okay? We have these little ice cubes, all right, in the glass, and that ice weighs 200 grams, they told us. Uh, there's also water in this particular uh, glass as well. That's actually unimportant. Um, reason why is because if there's ice in the glass, and liquid water, what's the temperature? The temperature is probably zero degrees Celsius, right? In order for the temperature though of this, in order for the temperature of the ice, let's say in the and the water inside of this glass to go up, first you have to melt all the ice, okay? So before all the ice melts, the, and this is assuming to be true, okay? Because you might say, well, I know that not, you know, I know that my glass starts to warm up a little bit. I have that glass of soda, right, with uh, some some ice in it. And I know before it fully melts, I know it's already getting a little warm. Yes, I, I know. This is, uh, we're not, we're living in the realm of, uh, of simplicity here. However, before all the ice melts, okay, we are to assume that the temperature remains constant inside of that glass at zero degrees Celsius. So the heat being transferred or the heat being lost by the, mixture inside this glass is due to the phase change of ice going to water, okay? And now heat, we can think about that. Heat is being gained, right, by this glass, okay? Because we are also to assume that this glass is, is in some environment that will be warmer uh, than the mixture itself, all right? It doesn't say anything like that in the problem. That's what makes this hard. Uh, so if that's the case, if the heat is being gained, if he's being gained by the liquid ice water mixture in here, well, where's the heat coming from? Well, the heat has to be coming from somewhere, and it's actually coming from then the condensation, okay, the condensation of water on the exterior of the glass. Now, where's that water coming from? Right, where's the water on the exterior part of the glass here coming from? It's coming from the water vapor in the air. Right, that's the trick. All right, so basically, what's happening is that the heat energy, okay, lost. I'll say I'll write a little negative sign there. The heat energy lost by condensation, aka going from a uh, water, water vapor in the air to then liquid water, liquid water on the exterior of the cup will equal then, whoops, will equal then the heat gained, okay, the heat gained uh, by the ice melting inside the glass, meaning the ice then is going to be converted into liquid. So that should make sense, right? In order for ice to go to liquid, heat has to be gained. In order for vapor to condense down to liquid, heat has to be lost. Right? It's the exact opposite process. Now, as far as the signs in this problem, the signs really are not uh, important, okay? I'm just detailing those signs in there. The signs really don't do us any, uh, any good per se, okay? Um, so what do we know now, right? We know this to be true, okay? Now, what do we know? Well, we know that we are dealing with eight grams of water that has condensed on the glass. So that means if I were to expand these two equations now, right, I could say that this is the mass of the water that condensed multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization, because that is the constant for condensation, will equal then the mass of the uh, ice that has melted, so I'm going to say uh, equals the mass of what has melted, multiplied then by the heat of fusion. Now, what are we after? We're after how many grams of the ice will melt as a result, okay? So now all we now really need to do is just plug in the value. You know, we can solve this thing for M, right? Sub melt, meaning the mass of the ice that will melt. So I'll write M, M-E-L-T, will then equal 
the mass that has condensed on the outside of the glass multiplied by the heat of vaporization, uh, all divided by uh, the heat of fusion. Okay, so this is it now. This is the formula. That's it. So now all we need to do is basically plug in the values, but you got to make sure you got the right units in here. All right, so just be careful. Actually, I mean, technically speaking, you know, if you notice this L is over this L, so those units will cancel. I'm just going to save myself some time then and not really do any conversions because I, I really don't need. Uh, they told us the grams of, of condensate, right, in uh, uh, of water. And like I was just mentioning, that's in grams. They want us to calculate grams, so... Uh, that's totally fine. I'm going to just going to plug in all the numbers here. All right. So the mass that has condensed was eight grams. The heat of vaporization is this. I know that's in um, kilojoules there, but it'll cancel with the kilojoules that I'm going to plug in in the bottom now, 334. All right. And now all I need to do is just do a simple calculation. So this is eight multiplied by 22556. Five, Wait, hold on. Got to get back to the right calculation. So sorry, 8 multiplied by 2256 divided by 334. And this is about 54. Okay, 54, 54 grams. All right, 54 grams of then that ice has now melted. So if only 8 grams, if only 8 grams condenses of water on the outside of the cup, that's equivalent to then 54 grams of ice melting inside the cup. Okay, because remember the heat is being transferred. Okay. Um, all right, guys. So hopefully this helped. Uh, if you could help us out by subscribing, that'd be great. And hit the like button. Uh, we'd appreciate it so much. All right. You guys have a great day.